Now, beloved, it will surprise you that because of all these things, um, it is on record that about 63% of young people who commit suicide are from fatherless homes. Fatherless homes. Five times average. Fatherless homes. Amen. 80% of children from fatherless homes. 80% of rapists from fatherless homes. 71% of school dropouts are from fatherless homes. Fatherless homes. Fatherless homes. Fatherless homes. And this is why I want you to understand that there are certain things that we need to quickly give, uh, trust the Holy Spirit to give us insight as we make some mistakes. Now I want us to quickly look at the forefathers that everyone, everyone should vie for. Forefathers. Number one, the Heavenly Father. We all know that in Matthew, the Bible tells that Jesus taught the disciples when they are praying, they should pray that our Father who is in what? Heaven. Hallelujah. Our Father who is in what? Heaven. Our Father who is in heaven. But the same Bible also says that either you choose God the Father who is heaven or Satan your father. Because in John 8, 44, John 8, 44, Jesus makes a very startling statement of the, of over there. John 8, 44. And it reads, he says that this, this is what I believe a lot of people seem to ignore. He says, and you are your father, the devil, and the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources for he's a liar. And the father of it. So here we are beginning to see that the first aspect is our heavenly father. You can choose the devil to be your father. That is John 8 44. The second one, a spiritual father, a man of God, a servant of God, anointed to nurture you, and that you need covering of that fatherhood and also mentorship mentorship. You need it. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, whether I like it or not, you need the mentor of a father. Hallelujah. And so now the third one is the national or the adoptive parents. And that is why what we saw in the book of Ruth, Naomi, nurtured Ruth. And that is why if you're a single parent, you have to bring your children under the covering of the pastor. 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 Muntie, listen. If you don't bring your children under the covering of the pastor, they will grow up and you never see them because you destroy their life. You are more than a witch. Yeah. That's the truth your single parent. You are more than a witch. I'll repeat it a hundred times. Because one day you are going to remember this statement and you realize the mistake that you made. You have to bring them under the covering of the pastor. If you're a single parent. Do you get it? Hmm. I'll tell you every truth. Then the fourth one is having a career or a professional mentor. And I believe the reason why Africans don't excel because they wouldn't go and ask the one who had gone ahead of him or had that insight that he or she need in that profession. Then questions. Because they are lost in the kingdom. And so the question is, who is your father? And where is your father? So what we know is that God blesses and blesses through fatherhood, mentorship, 
apprenticeship. We all know Samuel and the Reverend Eli. Who is teaching you and who is explaining things to you? You can ask the top footballers and the top musicians, and they will tell you who their managers are. They understand mentorship. The managers are the mentors. Somebody must manage your life. You can quote scriptures at me and tell me God is spirit. So we worship him in spirit. Thank God. But at the same time, there are earthen vessels on this earth that God pour his treasures in it in order to manage whatever he has put in place on this earth. And so you have to be very careful. Now, I'm praying that you understand these PowerPoint, these you know, foundations, so that from beginning from tomorrow, when we start you know, looking at the details aspect of it, you understand it proper. It is my prayer. It is my prayer. And so the truth about fathers is that God believes and blesses through fatherhood. Hallelujah. We'll get there. And so now, Jacob, according to verse 3 of Genesis chapter 49, the Bible tells us that, verse 3, Reuben, you are my firstborn, my might, and the beginning of my strength, the excellency of dignity, and the excellency of power. But verse 4, look at what happens. It says, unstable as water, you shall not excel because you went up to your father's bed then you defy it. Went up to my catch. That is Ruby. So now we are seeing that Ruby is receiving curse from the father. Now, however, when it comes to Simeon and Levi, Jacob does not bless them such as he did to Ruby because of the past things they have done in the past. Now in verse 5 he says, Simeon and Levi are brothers. Instruments of cruelty are in their dwelling. He says, verse 6, says, let not my soul enter their council. Let not my honor be what united to the assembly. For in their anger they slew a man and in their what self-will they hamstrung an ox. Now, when you look at the Hebrew word over there, ox, it's not ox, it's princess. You understand why it's princess? It's princess because the burden of leadership always rests with the head of the family. And the family, head of the family is known as what? Princess. Are you understanding? The word ox. Amen. <laughs> In the Hebrew rendering, that is the meaning. Now, even when you look at the young literal translation, that Bible, it makes it clear that it's princess. Amen. So it means all the burdens, whatever the children are doing, all the burdens falls under who? Jacob, who is a prince. And that is why uh, that is why we have to be very careful. The things we do, because a lot of things bring heads to the parents. And so what was happening here is this. That when we get to verse 6, that was the meaning. And so here, Simeon and Levi, he does not bless. Now, he blesses the rest of the sons with blessings and promises. Blessings and what? Promises. So the question is, why would Jacob come to the point of his life journey or getting ready to die and gathering his children around him to deliver what is known in that culture or called in that cultural era as patriarchal word, blessings. These are important blessings, which normally will show which way, which way your destiny is going to go. And all of a sudden, the past of Simeon and Levi seems to determine their fate. Instead, they receive a curse from Jacob. But the Bible tells us that when you read all the way through, you begin to see that the rest of them receive blessings of what? And promises. So the question is, is it fair or unfair for Jacob to do that? Is it fair? 
Probably those on my right will say it's fair. Those on my left will say it's unfair. But as we go ahead, we'll understand. So why is Simeon and Levi suffering from their past? The bygone periods of their life. The yesterday, the old days of their life. Is there a serious problem? Which we have to ask ourselves. Coming from your past. And can't God forgive you? Can't God forgive you? Is there any human past coming from your family? And you see, the question is, most people don't know that the family is the first institution. First institution of the Almighty God. It was instituted or came before the church. The first divine institution. And every family has roots, structure, branches, and leaves. A lot of people don't know. My people, a lot of people don't know that every family has its roots. People come here, I pray with them, I see their family roots. And I tell them, please sit under the feet of God. They don't understand. If one of them show up yesterday, yesterday night here. Oh. Family roots. Family roots. Family roots. And so here we see that in spite of the fact that Jacob's family is a family of God, in spite of our father, God has chosen this, you know, family by himself. Why do you think such a family still have some issues, emotional problems, some feelings, and some pain? Why? Why do you think it should happen that way? It's a question I'm asking the Holy Spirit to teach us and give us insights into some of these things. And how do you see their togetherness? Are they united in one entity? Are you sure they are? You see, I've seen families where they are together. People, even churches can come together. But to be able to have the necessary what? United front is a problem. That's why at times you can make visits to your family, but you will never be happy. Because there are certain things that need to be settled. But if you are not a good negotiator, you blow it off. So at times it's good to behave as if you don't know something has happened. In order to ensure that you enjoy the peace and come back. Say, Lord, Lord have mercy. Have mercy upon us. Grant us wisdom. Grant us wisdom. To navigate our way through. To navigate our way through. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. So how can Jacob call his children to bless them? But he's angry and upset with some of his children. What did they do at the point of his life journey? Getting ready to die. Meanwhile, getting the blessing of your father at this point determines your birthright and your destiny. Friends, to get the blessing of your father before he passed away is a big deal. And in this instance, God said, I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, which means Jacob, as far as he's concerned, has come to the end of that era to die. End of the patriarchal dynasty. And the 12 sons and two grandsons who have gathered around the dying bed of Jacob are so excited to get a blessing from the patriarch before he departs. But when it comes to Simeon and Levi, he takes a turn and he says in verse 5, Simeon and Levi are brothers. Instruments of cruelty are in their dwelling place. Let not my soul enter their counsel, my God. Let not my honor be united to their assemble. For in their anger, they slew a man. And in their self-will, they hamstrung an ox. So who is that ox? The father. They cause pain to the father. Are you causing pain to your parents? Because there's blessings that await you. And that is the challenge in our culture today. At times, when we visit Ghana, the way we talk to our mothers and our fathers, 
yet we call ourselves Christian. But this is clear in scripture that we have to be very careful the way we navigate things. And that is why when you look at Psalm 68, verse 5 to 6, Psalm 27, verse 10, and then Isaiah chapter 49, verse 50, all talks about the fact that God blesses through the fatherhood. God blesses those who submit to fatherhood and greatly honors those who assume the position of fathers and mentors to especially to especially the orphan and the fatherless. That is why the church should be blessing the orphans and the fatherless. It's a unfortunate lack of knowledge. Some people behave as if we are on top of the world. God says, I want to bless you, but I have delegated all the blessing through your father, your mentor, your father, your father, your father. Now, Deuteronomy chapter 34. Deuteronomy chapter 34. Deuteronomy chapter 34. Deuteronomy chapter 34. I'm reading quick. A very important scripture over there. Now, Deuteronomy chapter 34, verse 9, he says, Now Joshua the son of Nun was full of the spirit of what? Wisdom. For Moses had laid his hands on him. So the children of Israel heeded him and did as the Lord had commanded Moses. 34. Now Joshua was full of wisdom because Moses laid hands on him. In a sense, all the tough waiting that Moses went through, the 40 days that Moses was uh, on the mountain to wait upon the Lord, all the blessings, all the anointings, all the insight that Moses received, plus all the suffering that Moses went through, his call from the Lord, his calling from the Lord, all of them. That is what the Bible is telling us right here. Joshua received it through laying on of hands. God said, I want to bless all Israel, but I've given it through the priesthood. Aaron and the family and even God even dictated the blessing to Aaron and Abraham. Moses, sorry. So the best place to be is where God wants you to be. Amen. Amen. Then again, secondly, Fathers and mentors and role models and tutors are the ladders, the steps, and the elevators to your high places in life. Again, fathers, say fathers, fathers. Mentors, mentors, role models, role models. And, tutors and tutors are the ladders, are the, ladders the steps, the steps. And, the and the elevators to your high places in life. Yes, that is the second level, the high places in life are the spiritual fathers. If you want to get to the top, spiritual fathers. Amen. You can't go there. Then the third aspect, without fathers, you have no feathers. Say, without fathers. Without fathers. I have no feathers. I have no feathers. You want to fly? You want to fly? Fly, 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 fly. I mean, oh Lord, fly. So without feathers, without feathers, you cannot fly in any field of life. Without feathers, you cannot fly in any ministry. Without feathers, you cannot fly in the children ministry. You need feathers to fly, my daughter, my son. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. You can only have feathers from your spiritual fathers. That is what David did to who? Solomon. Solomon, God will give you the wisdom. Thank God. But we need my trees. We need my materials to build what? And it's with every parent. Every parent. Every pastor. Every spiritual father. Hallelujah. You know, in the political world, uh, political fathers, you go and they have ring. You bow and you kiss the ring. And then they call the electorate, the voters. And then they tell them, vote for that person. And that's it. And you are there. Amen. Say family matters. Family matters. Say family matters. Family matters. So some of us can only fly to the high life. 
if we are flying on the wings of our Godfathers, please, you can't make it unless you fly on the wings of your Godfathers. Tell your neighbor, be further. Say, be further. Say, be further. Say, be further. By those who have gone further, 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 and you will succeed. Now, sir, is a new thing. If I have sinned further, it is by standing on the shoulders of the giants who nurtured me. A letter to Robert Hook, 5th of February, 1675. 